I'm really before. hoping that like a lot of kids growing up now, right now in New Jersey, little Chabad kids start serenading girls on the internet because of this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I hope so. <laughs> that would be part my... of the next generation. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Mislabeled number 30, which I, I feel is like a little bit of a... It's a milestone. A little bit of a milestone, yeah. yeah. Uh, I happen to say it's really like number 10, because I kind of feel like we started the pod over again, Zach, once you came on. Like, I took a break for, what was it, four or five months, and yeah. then we brought you on. I felt like it was a new beginning, so uh, very cool. Uh, first of all, how you doing, Zach? I'm doing really well. Awesome. Happy to hear that. Shmali is not with us this uh, episode. He has work, so he wasn't able to make it. But um, we're, we're going to still do a good job on this one. Uh, Shmuley, we do miss you. That being said, I have uh, what Forever I think is a very... Well, <laughs> Forever in our hearts. Shmuley. Forever in our hearts, yeah. Um, I have, we have a very special guest with us this pod. Actually, interesting. It's the first person. I, I reached out on Instagram, I believe it was, and I said we're looking for good guests. If you feel like you have a good story to share, please let me know. Because uh, it's very hard to get people to share honestly and authentically. Um, and people are comfortable being in front of kind of the firm world. That's one of the difficulties and, and stigmas we're kind of trying to break, I feel like, with this podcast. Mm -hmm. So uh, the guest we have here is Zalman Kraus, right? That's right. He actually reached out to me. And I had a few other people reach out to me, and most of them, honestly, were just, I probably shouldn't say this because people know who reached out to yeah. them, but most <laughs> of them were people I did not really want to bring on my podcast. Uh, for various different reasons. Do you have any reasons to share or do you not want to share the reasons? <laughs> it's okay if you don't. We could say I'm just so were, curious. We could say that they weren't of the, the coolest, most social uh, creatures that, you know. You have to have the right kind of guest on these things. You really do. Yeah, for sure. You can't just have anybody. Stories, exactly. Know? And someone who knows how to share that. And know. interesting stories come from interesting people. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Very good. Exactly. So, yeah, there is... A, listen, who we choose as guests is important. And especially in, in, in the podcast world, you don't want to... Like, if, if you have a, a, a crappy podcast... It could like throw off your listeners. Like they may not want to listen to the next one because they just listened to a total dud for an hour and they were like, what was the point of that? So it is important who you pick. Either way, I don't want to get too hung up on sure this. That. So moving on, um, Zami, you reached out to me. Um, I asked you, uh, give me the basic background. Um, the only thing I'll start by saying is that Zaman's first thing was basically, yeah, I put out videos when I was younger and I've amassed over 100 million hits on YouTube with my videos. And then I started listening. It was basically what happened. But... Um, I, I do want to start off a little bit more in the beginning, like how you, uh, before the 100 million hits on YouTube, before that happened, obviously we'll get into how that happened and, you know, the detail of, you know, the, 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 the type of videos you were producing that got that type of uh, views. But where did you, can we just start with where you grew up? Yeah, sure. Um, so first of all, I grew up uh, Orthodox Jewish, like both of you did, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I represent. And um <laughs> Let's see. I grew up Orthodox Jewish in Marstown, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, Chabad. Shout out Chabad. Yep. Shout out the Rebbe. Chabad. We, <laughs> Shout out the Rebbe. We love Chabad. But yeah, we have had on. a bunch of Chabad. I know. We're killing it with Chabad, by the way. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Are you serious? There's a lot of... Um, by the way, Chabad people have, are unique. They're interesting. They're, they're nonconformists, I feel like, by nature. And they're willing to share. So it's like automatic. We just have them. That's so Chabad. interesting. Yeah. Nonconformists. Yeah, I definitely have that like, going for me. I don't know about it. Yeah. Did you grow up Chabad at all? No, no, very not Chabad. We okay. we went to Chavetz Chaim Yeshiva, which is almost like I know what it is. Yeah, it's like the Lifish version of Chabad. So we we're like sworn enemies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I come from a very musical family. My grandfather was a Chazan. My uh, un aunt and uncle are both uh, very like big in the music world. I guess um, my uncle plays. He plays piano for like all these celebrity parties in New York City. Like he used to play Jerry Stiller's birthday party every year. And like, Damn. yeah, so like. I just I have the music in me. It's genetic. It's uh, you know, very so, cool. So like I, siblings so I grew also. Up, yeah, my bro my younger brother is an incredible guitar player. Unbelievable. He lives in Austin, Texas now. Um, yeah. So the music always like fueled you know the series later. So got um, it. But I was playing music way before, obviously, like when I was growing up and stuff. When you were starting off in music, like just as a musician, you were from at the time. And you were like in that world. I had just kind of left, I guess. Oh, you know, I, you know, it's actually funny. The music probably was a, had a lot to do with me, like, you know, having like this existential crisis, which always happens when you grow up from, yeah. and you have, and you're given all the answers in life, and then all of a sudden you start questioning things. So, all, so then you you go through an existential period, right? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's massive. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what to do with all these feelings, all these thoughts music yeah all into the music because wow. i, I so feel it's like funny you said that 
I feel like existential thoughts and, and going through existential crises, which typically happens or should happen, I feel like when you're between the ages of, let's just say, 13 and 18, exactly. it's painful. It, it, those are growing pains, I feel like. And music yeah. saw, like really could heal pain. I mean, everyone knows that. I don't think, right? We it's kinda, a way to express the pain. Yeah, and it's like something that that's almost true. almost in a certain way, nothing else could could hit that soul piece of us that's in pain outside of music. I mean, maybe you have a yeah. great right. a great girlfriend or something, but... No, 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 nothing. You're right. And yeah. by the way, 13 to 18, that's great exactly... Great nothing on music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what were you saying? 13. It's funny you said 13, because that's when I started playing guitar at 14. So really? Right exactly then, going wow. through that. The reason I ask is because you're not the first um, musician we've had on. You're not the first, um, like, no longer religious musician we've had on. But the, <laughs> the guy we had on, this guy, Rafi Burritas, now he's just producing, like, his, you know, his regular like secular music is you know love songs breakup songs whatever he's writing but he started off as the nine and nine 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 guy on piano so i was wondering if that was like part of your journey like music kind journey. of yeah you were a nine and i guy, started you know? in the jewish world the, my first like thing that blew up was um jewish star do you remember that <laughs> i was i was gonna bring it up because i was gonna impress you I was with all, my like oh research yeah knowledge. what you, yeah you saw i that? know you're on jewish star <laughs> did, i don't know if label knows what this is yeah i don't even know what jewish star explain is. to him what jewish star was oh man what a disaster though it's hard to <laughs> what bring a it shit up show. <laughs> it was such a disaster okay i'll tell you what it is it's, it's american idol but it's in the jewish orthodox jewish world it was run out of brooklyn and the show, I think they had a couple seasons where you do like online submissions. And then finally they had like the real show where they have judges. They had like, you know, you know, people like uh, God Albaz was one of the judges. Yehuda Solomon Lipa from Schmelter Moshav, Lipa. Yeah. How long ago did this happen? Was this, this was taking like place? eight years ago, nine. When I was on there, I don't remember. It could have been nine. No, yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah. I was you know what? It was eight years ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Almost that. nine. Almost nine. Okay, so it True. sounds like it wasn't you're... on TV. It wasn't. Like, <laughs> it was on, it. It was on, it was on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, I got it. So it sounds like from what you're saying, this was a total dumpster fire. Well, what happened was we got to the finals. I actually made it to the finals. Okay, there were 250 people all around the world that flew into Brooklyn to do this. I was in the top 12, and all of a sudden they're like, "By the way, the show ran out of money. We're not going to film you're the rest." Joking? No way. <laughs> it was. It was hard. How? Who was funding it? Like you had to pay to get in. Like what was the financial aspect of? of no, you don't. This whole you show? don't pay to get in. It's American. It's like kind of like American Idol. You go in for free. There's there's funding behind it and advertisers behind it. Right. And then they hope to find a winner and you get signed and you come out with like a. They they fund your music video. They fund your career. Right. They fund your career. I remember the guy who won was the South African. <laughs> Funny, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think he ended up having a real career out of it. Maybe. I think he did. But he had a cool music video out of it. I think so what's the, the first of all, so it was a different season. You're saying that they ran out of money, not the one which you're. No, no right, right. So you, so that one, I guess they succeeded. They, fin they finished But your it. season, they just ran. Because I remember they seeing your. stopped. You middle. killed it. I remember seeing your, Thank um, you. what's it called? Not an interview. Your, uh. Audition? Your audition. I remember seeing your audition. I had, I didn't really know who you were, but like, I also, I think. Did you have like long hair in that? Yeah, yeah. So like I immediately it was like, oh, this guy's like cool, cool. Like he's not super from. Like this guy probably like. I already wasn't music. from at all. Yeah. Props to them though that like they probably knew them. They were just like, okay, whatever. It's you know. Okay, so that okay, I want to tell you something really funny that happened. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. so the show it got canceled, but the the producer his name was Danny. He hit me up. He's like, dude, I think you're really talented. I want to like manage you now. Is this Danny Chabad guy who sparks next production? Finkelman. Yeah. Danny Finkelman. Yeah, I want him on the pod. Oh, dude, it's a yeah, fascinating he's, guy. he is. He is. He's yeah. awesome. So, okay. So, what's funny is what you just said because he wasn't sure what my deal was with like from Kite or anything, right? But he actually flew me out to Italy to film my first music video. This is true, Rome, Italy, and he's looking over. Like he wasn't there. He just sent me with a videographer, and he's looking over the footage after the trip, and he and he's like, he's like, this is weird. You're the videographer. Kind of followed you around Italy for. a a couple days to like do this video and you're just like eating at all these regular like non-kosher restaurants and i'm like yeah he's like so you're not religious at all and i'm like nope busted did he have a problem with that or he didn't care i think he had a little bit of a problem he didn't know like what to do because because now he has to maybe like hide my uh, identity a little bit interesting because he produces projects from, from he produces from stuff and trust me he wants somebody who's from to be his his guy who he's managing right and he flew you out to italy yeah, yeah. thinking Ouch. that you were going to be one of his like from did he you stop, <laughs> did you like fall off his contact list like effective immediately Kind of, yeah. He was a little slick with it, you're saying. It was like a month process. I don't want to badmouth this guy, though. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I want him on the pod. Not at all. Honestly, it was a, mu <laughs> not, it was a mutual thing. He didn't okay. he didn't yeah. say, like, get the hell out. He didn't do that. Well, I, I always respect him because I thought, like, Jewish music, uh, like, video production has obviously in the past 10 years, like, went from, you know, like, the David Lavona like, Lecha so video in Yeshiva to, like, actual talent. There's, like, real talent. I mean, Rafi, again, our really talented friend, is involved in that world. And Wait, do you remember Miracle Days? 
Miracle Days. Oh man, that production was horrible. Anyway, I, yeah, I but you're right. Know. But it's no, the production up went up, and like Finkelman's crazy. shit, uh, Sparks Next was like well crafted stuff. Like he's a serious producer, and Absolutely. I think he was trying to make a movie, like a horror movie. I don't know, but I, he had me. But when we were still like doing our thing, he had me in a like a Doodoo Fisher film, like playing music and like a shit. That's so really never, interesting. Okay. No, I mean, kudos to him. I'm not knocking him in any way. Just going back to that at yeah. all. It makes total sense why he probably just conflict. He just can't do it. It's not like for the same reason why Mordecai Shapiro can't give a shout out to non Jewish nanny. It's the yeah. same concept. Like, is this just, a? It's a. It's a, a, a it's something that comes up again and again on this pod because mm -hmm. we have people who are like very from them. We have people who are like not religious anymore. This constant like tug of war between like, oh, we have a lot of creatives on here and creatives, a lot of creative, Jewish creatives end up not being religious. And there's obviously like, shit, there's a real connection there between like creativity and not, mm -hmm. not necessarily remaining religious. And like just the, the idea of like, can you be yourself? Will it be accepted in the, in the from world? And like at the end of the day, like most of the time, no. <laughs> that's the thing about artists yeah. like we want to express ourselves so if we're held back it really you know it, it, it's but, hard for us can I ask a question though just sure. between me and you how are you how did you feel that you were held back by let's say from Kite from using your creativity meaning obviously you had an existential crisis right and I totally can respect that but how does that conflict with the creativity piece? Does that make sense? No, I don't. I don't really go. Meaning, everything. if you're not religious because of an existential crisis, totally understand that makes total sense. But how does uh, how does you know the creativity piece make it harder to be religious? Yeah. Did did do you think your the fact that you were creative and want to express yourself in myriad different ways play a part in not wanting to be religious? I think so. I think it, it's it's directly connected to it. So how? Yeah. That's what I'm just the piece I'm trying to, to understand. Um, you know, by the way, this is therapy. Do, We're why couldn't you right do now? everything that you wanted to do and still be religious, or everything that you've done and still be religious? Hmm, wow, that's a, such a good, no. It's a great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a great question. I'm sure there's. By the way, I'm sure there's a good answer. I'm not like God forbid trying to like. It's a very, it's a thought provoking question. Yeah, because I, 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 I'm sure there's a connection there. That's all. I think I don't really want answers. Right. Well, I don't want answers. I want questions. I want to keep questioning and keep searching. I love that. To make art. That's, That's like one of the coolest answers I've ever heard to that question. That's, yeah, I like that. That okay. is very cool. So outside of your music, right, and we're going to get into all the YouTube stuff in a minute, do you have other creative aspects to you? I don't know, in any other capacity that you, that you use as art? Yeah, because you're right. Like I'm always creating and it comes out in different ways. So sometimes... Like, I think I could be an actor. I've acted a little bit, but I think I could, like, really be an actor. That's that's one of the goals I'm shooting for. And um, also, I'm a comedian. Like, I'm a total comedian, which really? we're going to get to with the YouTube stuff. Yeah, because, yeah, like, it was fusion with comedy and the whole thing. Really? I don't, yeah, I don't even know where to start with you because, like, looking through your feed on Insta, it's like, this guy, is, he's a quadruple threat. Because there's been, <laughs> yes, you're on. We're you're, doing it. <laughs> I see you doing. I see you doing comedy. Like usually with a guitar, right? So you're a bit of like you're a music comedian, right? Have yeah, I've done, done stand, up. stand up. Yeah, I've done stand up. You've done okay. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, I'm not so good at it yet. As someone who's I'm done so, both, to be honest. As someone who's done both, and it's it's a joke between me and all of my musician friends, like Ben Lerner. Mm -hmm. All of my friends who do music also want to be comedians. Every including me. Musicians are one. so are the funniest people. Yeah. They really are. I don't or, know why. And we're just also, we just desire like validation from like a crowd of people <laughs> so bad, but like low self-esteem. Do we have low Oh, maybe, maybe that could be it. Uh, <laughs> it's better than me. I'm not a musician. I'm not a comedian. You that's, you desire. Desire. <laughs> that's terrible. But that's I'm, not I'm hard my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're doing all right. All right. Um, what I'm wondering is, is do you, cause I've never done comedy and I have got pages of, of jokes that I would like to say that's to awesome. me I would rather perform a song I've practiced three times in front of a crowd of 200 people than perform comedy for 50 people that I've practiced 100 times to me, I agree it's terrifying do you do you yeah so having done both do you think it's like way harder yeah. to do stand comedy yes it's part, the hardest part of the, part of the reason that it's, it's really way hard yeah I part of the just, reason I it's so hard I feel like part of the reason is you just have a mic that's that's part of the reason the the guitar or whatever you're accompanying yourself with really adds so that there's no like awkward silences or right. like weirdness that's number one number two when you're doing comedy you actually have to wait for the audience to respond to you to continue right. doing it wow. like you have to you're like, not like not so in control you if have you to, bomb like, it's just exactly. horrific have you bombed be honest oh yeah yeah i'm not good at it yet i'm sorry right. stand up i'm not a professional yet like i want i really want to be can i ask you a question how old are you by the way 30 uh, I thought honestly, I don't know. I thought you were a little bit older. Okay, but I didn't realize you're basically our age. No, I don't know why. I thought you were like thirty. I thought you were like thirty-five. So when you were doing, um, I, I do want to get a little bit into the the 
We got time. Uh, we got time. Well, no, but I want to just kind of jump into things because sure. I'm sure people are curious about the YouTube stuff. Uh, how many siblings do you have? I have five siblings. So you're one of five. Got it. You're like older. Um, I'm I'm the fourth in line, like from the top. So got it. I'm um, not. So I'm just trying to like build a little bit of a picture. And you went to like Chabad yeshivas growing up. A little bit. Like they they didn't have a secular education, so my parents actually very quickly they they moved. From Marstown to where? So when I was like nine. So your parents did. valued the secular education. They wanted My to... mom does. My mom graduated from Brown University. She like Ivy League school. So she's like, yo, we got to. What like... is she a feminist? Huh? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> where did Where did you guys move to? Passaic. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's not cool. A lot of great art coming out. Do of you know? Do you know? <laughs> do you know Shua Leibowitz? Josh Leibowitz? I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure if you know. Label. We got to talk about. He's like desire 20... to play Jewish geography on every pod. <laughs> He's no. like 29 or something. <laughs> It's probably something, maybe a little bit older. I don't know. I'm not even sure exactly. I, think I know exactly what you're talking about. Whatever. Yeah. He's one of a bunch. Of, he has a bunch of siblings. I know him a little bit. Oh, they have like 12 siblings. Yes, correct. Yes, yeah, I you know, do know them. I know. There you go. Guys. Done. Um, we're done. We're done with Jewish geography. Yeah, no, no, let's keep going. He does this every. Five. No, I'm just curious if you know the mistake. Okay, so so where did you go after like I guess middle school and high school? Well, for high school, they like I already like I went. I came here. I went to Priority One. Like with all those. Did you remember guys? Shai Cohn? Dude. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, we both went to ZA. Uh, remember Shai Cohn was just on this podcast like no. four weeks ago. Yeah, no he knows me. I Ask brought me him on. Me. That's so. That's so amazing. I brought him on for for uh, Yom Kippur. Right before Yom Kippur, we brought him on. We do like one. And he does not know what happens on this pod when <laughs> he's not on it. <laughs> Correct. We brought him on for like one. We have like one inspirational Jewish based podcast basically the entire year. Right before Shana, when we're all feeling crappy about our and her that we say on this podcast. So we brought him on, and no, I actually like Rabbi Cohn a lot. So what happened with him? How was it? It was great. No, I I, I like Rabbi Cohen a lot. How do you know him? Like, how, how do you how are you so connected with him that you can have him on the podcast? Because Rabbi Cohen is like a Chavetz Chaim right. guy, and uh, we're very labels familiar. family is like Chavetz Chaim involved, like very involved. They're all of his his entire extended family is Chavetz Chaim or So I know. I also went to ZA for for a year, really? for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. for like a year. I was, I was there, there for two months. Right. Wow. How long so, were you in Priority One? Well, we were in Priority One, so we didn't do like the learning thing at all. We just uh, played pool and yeah. smoked weed and uh, did nothing. It, was there even learning there? At yeah, yeah. You can learn if you want to, but like they really don't push it on you. It was actually it's very interesting. That's setup. very Rev Shai Cohen's thing. They kind of changed it though, because like a lot of people were complaining. They're like, "What are you guys even doing there?" Right. <laughs> you know, right. We're keeping them off the streets. How How I, long? Kind of, yeah. What age were you when you went to Priority One? I went there all through high school. Fourteen. Oh, really? To, like, well, seventeen. I went to Israel. I was like, kind of like. Did I actually like, dropped out of high school, so. Oh, I also did. We're twins. You wait. You went to like yeshiva in Israel. I went to Neve. You went to Neve. It's not really yeshiva either. I'm okay. So what? I, what I'm gearing? That's not. <laughs> whoa. Uh, no. Oh no. Um, <laughs> again, you could learn if you want to. You don't have to. What I'm gearing towards was like, at what stage? So right now you're 18 in Israel in Neve. When do you first pick up a guitar and be like, I'm gonna go film myself with this uh, guitar in hand? Like, when is the first time that that happens? Like serenading stuff. But, can you just share with well, everyone exactly yeah. what the YouTube stuff was? Yeah, like, how, that got you how did you get 100 million views? Let's just get right to it on that. Yeah, let's get to it. I kind of want to talk about something before that, though. That's sure. pretty interesting because, like, why does something go viral? That's a very good question, right? I love that question. There's, there's, there's heart in it. There's passion in it. There's something behind it. When I was doing music and, and serenading girls, like, there was a reason why I did that. And there's a reason why I took that opportunity on. So let's, let's talk about that and then and then... You'll know. Yeah, for sure. You'll have the answer. So what happened was this hap the serenading happened right after Danny and I decided like, you know, it's Part not, not going to work out. It literally happened a week after. Okay. And this is very interesting. We filmed the first episode on Shabbos. And on Friday, I was doing music in the studio. And the woman who there's a woman who was like, you know, I was working with and she's super from and she said to me, she's like, if you film a video tomorrow on Shabbos, it's going to be really, really bad for you. And it's not, nothing's going to work out. It's not going to be successful. And I was like, okay, I don't know what you're talking about, but okay, I'm filming. Like that's happening. So we filmed, and this is really interesting. It, it, the first video went viral. Your first ever YouTube video. No, my first ever serenading. serenading. I, was, I was doing uh, YouTube before that. I just, I didn't know how to get hits. And you were how old again when you started? 22. Oh, so your first, this is well after, this is after you came back from Israel already. Oh, yeah. The yeah. serenading stuff. This is, this is right after Danny, like right after Jewish Star, I was 22. So I was still 22 when, when we did serenading, when we did YouTube stuff. I was trying to get big on YouTube. There was this guy named Kobe Pearson. So I, right. I saw you with, all the, with him all the time. Who's Kobe Pearson? So I grew up with him. He was doing pranks on YouTube, getting a lot of hits because it's easier to get hits on pranks than music stuff. It's yeah. way easier. It's way easier to get someone to click on a video that says, girl sucks on a banana like it's a, you know. Yeah. Right. 
than like a John Legend cover of by some unknown artist. Yeah. Right. So he was blowing up, and then he like is he a Jewish I, guy. Yeah, he grew no, up he from, I, from. I had no idea. He's in no Florida, idea. right? Yeah. He is. He, he's he's all over. He grew up like we worked in New York. Then we we moved to LA for years to to film stuff there. And then you were like uh, doing full time YouTube content. Oh, absolutely. We were we were doing great for years. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I saw most of your stuff is older. But yeah, go on. Yeah. So you so Kobe and I so Kobe asked me. He's like, "Do you want to incorporate music in with the pranks a little bit?" And I was like, "That sounds uh, interesting. What did you have in mind?" And he actually suggested. He's like, "Why don't you serenade girls and for their phone numbers? Try to get their phone numbers." So I said immediately, I was like, "This is a great idea. Why is it a great idea? Number one, it's going to get YouTube vi views. Yeah, because I was trying to do you know music. Nothing was happening. This is unique. This is cool. This is going to happen. Number two, I was so bad at talking to girls because I grew up from. I never had it girls in my life. I was like, this is going to get me out of my shell to talk to girls and and be right. around them." Are you naturally an introvert? I don't know. It's an interesting question. I'll tell you why. You strike me as a little bit of an introvert that's gotten comfortable with expressing yourself and being a little bit more like, almost like it could appear as an extrovert, but you're really not. There's a whole word, uh, there's a whole yeah, there's type of person Breyers like Migs, that. Uh, the the Myers-Briggs thing. <laughs> I said it backwards because I'm falling off my Briars desk. Briars Migs? Are you tired? <laughs> are you tired? Briars Migs, No, baby. but seriously speaking, right? Is that what you're referring to? That's yeah. So, interesting. so there's like there's like introverted extroverts and extroverted introverts. I'm, I'm just speaking only because of the fact that you were in Priority One for four years. You were in Neve. You yeah. still weren't comfortable talking to women by the time, let's say, before you started this whole thing. Well, I was like, I was already talking to women and dating women a little bit, but like, I was so behind. Dude, in yeah. Right no, I, we're, yeah. In, in fairness, I could totally relate to this. It's not like I'm out to lunch on it, but just, I guess it was just interesting to me. I, I started a little bit later in my life. Like, I was still like very from it, like through high school. So like, I had no exposure. I just would have assumed that you had more exposure and priority one and this and that. I guess I would have just assumed. You're right, a little maybe, bit. And in the vein is, I didn't really go to Israel, so I don't know. Label, a little I don't bit, know if you know this, but there's no girls in priority one. Like no, but uh, he has more exposure than I did when I was in Chavez in Brooklyn. I was Slightly. very, I was very shy. It's a personal thing. A lot of yeah. kids in 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 Priority One were talking to girls, were hanging out with girls all all day. Right. I was not one of them. I was like super shy. So that's the introvert aspect. I'm so about. where did you get the balls to like to be a, a guy who knows you're not good with girls, right. who and the music's not going anywhere, and you're gonna be like, nah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go sing to strangers, hot ones. On the street. Like, That's exactly the point because I was so shy. I'm like, I have to go to the opposite extreme if I'm ever going to conquer this fear. I applaud you, yeah. sir. Did you, ever, did you see the first serenading episode? I ever? think I have, yeah. I was like a little nervous boy. <laughs> I didn't know. like. That's awesome. And your first one went viral. Like the first, yeah. you got like immediate gratification of this is what, this is the route. 80,000 views the first day, 350,000 views the first week. I remember clearly. Wow. That what was the title? Been, what was that, hold on. What was that dopamine hit when you were seeing those numbers it's like drugs right it's it like it's like be. being high okay i remember being at a at a meal and i'm literally just on my phone the entire time while everyone's talking just, just like looking at the views go up i'm like oh this my is on God. you shot the video on Chavez, right yeah and it still did well it's unbelievable I'm messing. <laughs> I'm messing. Yeah, how did that, that? Whole, that whole thing I, I never bought into that i'm like yeah. hashem doesn't work the way you want him to believe yeah, it yeah, works. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly right who knows what's going it's on it's not just who that knows? your understanding of how god is is not is not reality like yeah. don't make the rules for him yeah, it's just it's or, just absurdity. There's a lot of people that were Jewish that were very. Hashem very, actually follows him on YouTube. <laughs> I'm saying there were a lot of fan. very bad people that were Jewish. I mean, Harvey Weinstein was Jewish. He produced movies on Shabbos. They did pretty very well. Very successfully. And he was a rapist, so it's like. <laughs> you know. And and it was the rape that took him down, not the breaking of Shabbos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. At no point was the Me Too like he broke Shabbos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. There's so many things on this that I have questions about. Um, your earlier work because you were talking about how you were like this very shy kid and i can kind of tell from your hair right now that you probably had like a jew fro if it grew out a little bit yeah did you play up the like that as almost like a character like oh i'm just the 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 shy jewish guy like i couldn't possibly have game and then like use that as the surprise of like no actually like i never used that as an angle okay I, I literally was very shy it was very hard for me to go up to girls yeah i had to overcome that through years of going up to them and that's it it just was real and natural could you just share when you did this the first video? What do you, what were you doing in your first video? Could you just depict yeah. to the audience who has no idea who you are? Who sure. never went to YouTube exactly yeah. what you did? Again, you said eighty thousand views the first day, three hundred and fifty thousand views the second day, and no, the, the first week three hundred fifty thousand. Okay, whatever. First week. That's yeah. safe to say, a shit ton of views. Yeah. What exactly did you do? So um, I learned three songs, Kobe's choice, 
he said, listen, learn these three, the romantic songs. And then I was like, can I add my own song? Because I wrote a song. I'm like, hey, this is a good promo for my own song. Can I add my own song in there? He's like, yeah, sure. So then what we did was we drove to the mall. It was, I think it was winter when we started. So we couldn't film outside. We had to go into the mall. And part of the reason we went into the mall also is because we want to get kicked out. Because back then, getting kicked out of places went viral. So immediately we're like, let's go to the mall. We'll serenade with a guitar. We'll have a camera there. They're going to kick us out. That's going to go viral, which is exactly what happened. But while we're in there, I had to approach a few girls. So, and that's it. I would just, I went up to them. I had to like, I had to overcome it and I had to just go up to them. It was there was a ton of anxiety in that moment? Insane. Honestly, there's a lot of anxiety. And then I had to tell myself, shut, shut. off every single yeah. thought in your head right now just and go. play the song. That's yeah. It. And one second, were you successful? Like, what was the response? Did you get the numbers? Very. That's awesome. Very successful. Very That's successful. Great. Right away. It's, it's right away. extremely attractive. But but I wasn't confident at all. Even when I went up to them, I was not confident at all. I was like, kind of like, hey, can I sing right. you a song? But they still liked it. Maybe they felt bad for me. Maybe they're like, hey, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe half the maybe your views were coming from guys who were like, hey, like, he seems like not even that confident. He's killing it. Can I say one thing? Women, and sorry for interrupting you. There, I don't think what I'm saying is novel, but it's always a good thing to remind guys this. Women love when you go, when you do that, when you when you approach them and show confidence. They they freaking love it, and it's as scary as, as hell. In a respectful way, right? People, exactly. Men and women, people in general, strangers enjoy being paid attention to and made to feel good. It's it's like a classic thing. But I think women specifically appreciate a man who has the confidence to go over to them and be honest and upfront if they're respectful about their feelings. And sure. you're not the the fear that we have, again, you could get rejected. I'm not saying it's never happened. But more times often than not, or a lot more than you would think, um, a lot of times the response is a positive one. Um I don't know if we're gonna keep the story in that I said before, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah. it was a lot more positive than I thought it would be. Yeah, so. whatever happened with that, by the way. <laughs> she wasn't Jewish, so that was the end of that. I got you. So you were getting numbers from these girls. Did yeah. you end up in going on dates with any of them? Like you're calling these numbers, like So the very first video, um I, there was this one girl who was particularly interested and we we were texting a bit and she was kind of seeing this guy at the same time, but it wasn't really working out, blah blah blah. My texting game was so bad because I was new to this whole thing. Yeah. Like my texting game was so bad, I lost her. Yeah. I lost her. I could have I could have well, had it. Like there's now so I'm many like, ways. Oh my God. <laughs> there's different ways texting game could be bad. Like how is your texting game bad? Was it too much? Were you doing too little? Maybe, t maybe I came off too desperate. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Just being or, honest. Or when or when honesty is what we do here. Or when you like are a thousand texts to one, like long paragraph text to like yeah. A three word text. Yeah. And you just not pick like that was definitely my my problem. <laughs> I'm it, a lady. It makes you come off <laughs> makes, makes you come off as, as maybe lo lonely. I don't know. Or like yeah. I really need to share my life with someone in a romantic way. I and they're know. just like, chill. I yeah. thought you were cute. Like let's relax here. <laughs> yeah, I told yeah. I, I was it's so funny you're saying this. I feel like we relate to each other on this. Like my texting game was horrific. Like as of even whatever, five, six years ago. It's a different planet now. Like if I have no no yeah, insecurity. Now his texting that. game is just solidly mid. <laughs> <laughs> my, te my texting game is still awful, but I, but I kill it in real life. So, I, I love it because I have a lot of experience. I love it. You probably yeah. You probably you're okay. This is interesting. Has your experience being a YouTuber who goes over to people and does something that ninety nine percent of the people in the world would not have the balls to do? Do you find that like now there's just no social situation that like you could deal with anxiety of any social situation yeah i don't really have anxiety anymore and i you and fucking I, and I cured have, your own anxiety and i have no fear of going up to anyone it doesn't matter who they are you have zero approach anxiety for anyone no ask uh <laughs> that's amazing because wow. we were just hanging out in crown heights i picked up a girl she's been texting i don't, I don't even know if he knows this but she's been texting me to come over so literally i just walked up with her like on that's awesome that is really awesome wow. like, have you so, ever have, have you gotten like into relationships out of this stuff yeah yeah wow i uh i dated this girl for a year and she was on all my youtube videos for that year too so about you she wanted that, to be involved in the in the stuff that relationship happened because you went over to her and got her number yeah and then and, and then she was in my videos for a year and like and she's a singer so like we were, were you like co-serenading people no were we? we were just hanging out i don't know oh. i was vlogging <laughs> and then we were going into studios and singing songs that's unbelievable and she was drop dead gorgeous like wow that is amazing i assume when that happened you your anxiety probably done no i have no anxiety going up to anyone no but i'm saying back Literally. in this time like with her? Yeah, I mean that kind of answer that should have I would have I would think if you picked up a super hot girl and dated her for a year because you went over to her on a whim and just like played her a song and like what resulted from that was like having a relationship with someone for a year. Right. I would think that that would like you'd never be anxious again going over to someone. I guess you're right. <laughs> oh, anxiety runs deep. Like no, we, I, I know. our brains will tend even if you like 
totally like are killing it your brain will be like yeah but you're not gonna kill him next time you know right no there is mm. a piece it takes that. you've just probably had so much experience with not getting rejected that you're a, you're just able that voice doesn't have but a say I, anymore. I have been rejected a lot that's the truth of course but uh i think mostly i haven't been rejected and when i sing when i go up to girls and sing songs like mostly they're not like get out of here mostly they're like oh this is awesome even if i sing this is what we tested later on. We tested like really dirty songs, really filthy rap songs, singing them. They love it. There's like, there's rarely any girl who's like, how dare you? Well, it happens, but it's rare. They think it's funny or stupid, but like in a cute way, like, right. Dude. I saw some of your stuff. So what other, uh, like I saw you had all different themes of the type of uh, stuff you would record. Like I saw one was like, where you dressed up as a homeless man. Right. Like there were a lot of funny things. Like you dressed up as a homeless man. I saw one and you were like, can I get your number? And you were literally dressed in like rags. And like, she's like, sure. You're like, you pull out a napkin. And they're like, what's that? You're like, oh yeah, I don't have a phone. I just only have a napkin from McDonald's. Can you put down your number? She's like, sure. And then you're like, oh, can I take you out? She's like, sure. Okay, we're going to have to be on the corner in the subway. And she's like, sure <laughs> like you just kept on so, pushing it further yeah, yeah so here's the thing like either she's too she doesn't want to say no she she feels bad or she kind of figures it's a joke i don't really think they were like seriously like ooh, a homeless guy <laughs> at all ever okay fine so anything else you could share on the so you basically you got 100 million views over how long was that uh like eight years eight years yeah okay cool the story gets really really more interesting yeah if what you want, if you want to yeah. know more Please. details and everything Please. Um, so the, one of the coolest things that happened was there was a company in Malaysia that wanted to make you talk a little bit more into the mic. So one of the things that happened was there was this company in Malaysia who wanted yeah. to start making YouTube videos and they didn't really want to film content in Malaysia. They wanted Americans because they thought like, that's how you go viral. Everything in entertainment is in America. Let's get American yeah. kids to do it who are, have big YouTube channels. So they started hiring us to make content for them. And the content blew up in Malaysia. So let me tell you something about Malaysia. So you're huge in Malaysia. Literally. So let me let me tell you. <laughs> there's there's 30 million people in Malaysia. That's it. Okay? Okay. My views on the Malaysian videos were like uh, at least that. So I almost I almost hit their entire country. <laughs> that's actually <laughs> unbelievable. So they flew me out. Like You're like to... the br you are literally like the Ed Sheeran of Malaysia. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> like now it's all kind of dead. Like I've moved on from this. But back in the day, like, yeah, I was like I, I flew out to Malaysia and people would stop me in the street. It was so dude, I that's swear. insane. It was funny. It was what type of content were you making for them? Same thing, serenading. They love the serenading there. They loved it. Really? It took off. They they gave me my own apartment there, they gave me my own driver. Like I was like a celebrity in in Malaysia. That's unbelievable. If you went back there, you think people would still know who you were? I don't know. It's been a while. Maybe not. But like, how weird. Like, what is life? Like, who did you what? go with? What's so weird is that By we're myself. having this conversation in the five towns. Like, like you're a <laughs> kid from towns. Jersey. We're having a conversation in the five towns. And then it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm like a celebrity in Malaysia. Like, that's, <laughs> It's the randomest thing in the, the world. By the way, it's a Muslim run country. That's a funny thing. When I got there, they're like, you're Jewish, right? I was like, yeah. They're like, you don't have a yarmulke or anything. Because like, they might get give you a fine if you wear a yarmulke in the street. I was like, where the hell am I right now? You went by yourself? The first time I went by myself. The second time I went with the girl who I told you about, who yeah. like we dated for a year, like we went together. Wow, I'm surprised you went yourself to like some to freaking Malaysia. Like I wouldn't have gone to like anywhere in the Middle East that was like a Muslim run country, but Malaysia, I heard like a lot of things about it. Like it, they're pretty cool. I mean, obviously that you can't wear a helmet or you, you could get fined. die, but like whatever. <laughs> you you could get lynched, but you it, took your bets. I don't think they really care about the Jew. I think they care more about the Israeli thing than the Jewish. Right, thing. right, right, right. Got there, it. Yeah. Right. Wow, so you're what a crazy thing. So you're a celebrity in Malaysia. That's wild. Okay, and then some, and somewhere in the middle of this mix, how old are you at the Malaysia? I'm just trying to get a picture. 25. You're 25. When does MTV happen? Uh, okay. And talk to us about what that was. Okay. Um, so there was a few things that happened with MTV. The first one is they wanted to do this pilot called Internet Stars and Bars. Never actually happened, but it became a spec pilot, which which just means they saw it and they're like, no, we're not picking it up. Oh, okay. Wait, um, that means something was filmed and produced. Yeah. Shown to execs and they're like, no. Yeah. So it's just wasted money and time. Oh yeah, it so happens, we, all, happens all the time. That's how pilots work, right? I, well, I there's spec, there's spec pilots, and then if they like it, they're like, okay, we'll put then money into a, pilot a real pilot. pilot. Mm -hmm. Then it's a little bit of money. They don't put a lot into the real pilot usually. Mm -hmm. It's usually very cheap. And then they they test it. They're like, oh, the audience liked it. We're putting now now we're signing you for six episodes. We're signing you for ten right, episodes. Right, right. So that that, then, that never went anywhere. Okay. That never went anywhere. That was filmed in a huge studio in New York called Smash Studios. Is that what it's called? Smash Studios. Sure. Um, after that, what happened? Wait, well, how did MTV find you? Were you scouted? Did you? Yeah, did they, you, they they looked they at came all to you. the YouTube pranksters. 
they had deals with all the YouTube pranksters at the time because they thought like these YouTube pranksters and YouTube in general is going to be the next MTV. So yeah. we better it get on. It kind of did become the next <laughs> no. MTV. Did they sign you? They didn't sign me to any. Okay, so uh, let's let's continue. So the sec- the second thing that happened is they wanted to do a show called Say It in a Song, and they know my content is perfect for it because yeah. it's it's like you 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 ser- you actually serenade yeah. girls. You saw the episode, yeah. So like, no, we had I didn't Kobe, see that we but well, you saw Kobe was like serenading his girlfriend at the time, and they do it as a reality show. Yeah, and yeah. I'm playing guitar for it, so it's like perfect for the brand. So if you if you could think about it, I was perfect for them. So they actually wanted me. So that. You know, took off a little bit, I guess, and that and they paid me, which is really cool. When MTV has you on your, their payroll, it's like, whoa, what is going on right. here? I'm a little YouTube dude. It's like, amazing. Yeah. And then something really major happened, but but didn't actually happen, which is they wanted me to be like to do my serenading show, and I met with the ex president of MTV. His name is Tony DeSanto. You can look him up. He was the chief of programming on MTV. Right. He was a fan of mine. Really? He met me in LA. Wow. Took me out to, for drinks. I didn't know who he was. He was being very humble. And then when he left the table, his like uh, assistant is like, do you even know? You look like you don't know who you're ch- chilling with right now. I'm like, I don't. Like, I got an email. It looked kind of professional. He's like, dude, this guy used to run MTV. He took you out for drinks. Like, you should like, you know. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what? No, that's good. And I was like, it cool. But uh, yeah. And by the way, I thought they were BSing me. So I had to look him up afterward. And I'm like, oh, my God. So and then, he wanted to produce a whole show just for you? Well, no, he wanted like a few YouTubers who do unique things with music. And I was obviously on the list. Okay. There was a few other ones. So I don't what really... So we we had like the go ahead, like it's called like the green light. They green light yeah. you for a pilot. And some for some reason, like they wanted to link it with um, MTV of UK. They wanted to do like a collab MTV US, MTV UK with our show. And for some reason there was some beef and that was it. The whole thing went out the window. But we already got greenlit, which is crazy. We already were like... Yes, you're going ahead for a pilot. The British are still fucking around in U.S. affairs, <laughs> ruining careers, bro. Come on. Do you imagine? How, can you imagine how disappointed I was? I, I cannot that, imagine. That, by the way, that is so heartbreaking. Because it's not just like, oh, maybe you'll have a pilot. They're like, yeah, you have a pilot. But not just that. That like you're ready be, to go. That could be a ticket to real superstar. Yeah. That's not like fake. That's that's a ticket. No, you're you're you'd be on TV. They already they already told me how much they were gonna pay me and stuff. What was yeah. the number? At the time, Label. why can't you say that? That's fine. It's not. That's what this podcast it wasn't is even. For. It wasn't even that much. It was 10k an episode for me. But I mean, that's kind of a lot. But then, obviously, if that's the, not a little if bit. If the money. season does well, the next one is like 10 much times more. that. Right? Yeah, 10 times that. Of course. Okay. So that's not so shit. But they're still talking about kind of real money for you know for somebody like yeah. It's a real job. Yeah. yeah. Where where I'm serenading girls like it's a real job. Anyone paying you any cup. money to serenade girls <laughs> like any money like if someone give you like a a, a half used sandwich like <laughs> exactly. for serenading girls that's, that's sometimes crazy. I would serenade girls and they'd, and they'd be like oh here's a dollar and I'd be like oh I'm not like I'm not busking. I'm not, poor. <laughs> I'm not busking like that's great. I'm like you're on camera. And they're like oh oh that's a, okay <laughs> regular question like just. Uh, logistics yes. yeah. where's the camera guy right so. and how is he not freaking people out like he's got to be kind of out of the way i'm assuming and also other... who's the camera guy and how much are you were you paying the camera guy and one other question also <laughs> once we're at it bombard the hell out of you <laughs> yeah <thanks. laughs> um one other question is it legal to just like film all these chicks do they have a problem why do you have to ask for them the permission afterwards or have to blow their face okay these are all very, answer good, all the, very yeah. good questions what was the first question again no i'm just kidding <laughs> um so the cameraman has these little tiny cameras probably like this maybe a little maybe a, li- a little less and he know he has to have skills of, t- of hiding and zooming he has to have skills of being far away. So he's kind of far. And zooming in. Okay. It's like a sniper a little bit. Yeah, yeah, literally. Um, what was the next question? We don't pay him that much. It's a Craigslist job. It's like a Craigslist job. It's like $100 a session, which is like two hours. Do you really want to know the numbers of everything? Yeah. No, I mean, sure. I love, yes. But like, Zach, stop saying yeah. no. <laughs> yes. I have a lavalier mic. Do you know what that is? I need You need the lavalier yeah, mic. Yeah, of course. The thing that clips on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. because then you get the distance shot. Right, because it's it's synced up. So I, you need that for what hidden mean, camera. What do you mean by the distance shot? Sorry. So if he he has he could be really far away and still pick up my sound because he needs to, right? Because it's connected through whatever radio waves. So it's right. like I could be really far away. Okay. What you need? So how far away is the cameraman typically? He's probably like 40, 50 feet. Got it. Maybe more. Okay. Okay. Um, are you allowed to film? You're allowed to film anybody in a public place th- and put it on YouTube. The thing is, they could flag it on YouTube if they want to. So we don't want to cause problems. So after you do the, you go over them. You you go over them after and be like, by the way, we just filmed you for YouTube. And most of the people were totally fine with it. Yeah, we've had people be like, no, right. you're not. Of course, you're not putting me on YouTube. And I and we just would be like, all right, that's it. Next, move Next. on quickly. They didn't freak out. They weren't like calling the cops. Some people are really paranoid. 
Not really. I think that there were enough people at this time already, like, doing camera work right. in public that people kind of knew yeah. what it was. Also, you were doing this out in L.A., right? Yeah, and I like people LA, are cooler it, yeah, right, about all are, this like, stuff. used to, like, everyone's trying to get famous in L.A. Right. Like, there's cameras around. So true. People, no, nobody, like, freaked out and wanted to call the cops. Some people were a little put off by me. I've had people be like, dude, get the hell away from me. I've had that, like, a few times. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. And like it makes you feel bad. I'm like I'm just trying yeah. to like make your day and like <laughs> maybe get trying a to make your day. <laughs> yeah, maybe get a little famous. But like. the person that's gonna say that to you doesn't give a shit about what you're gonna tell them afterwards. I feel like, like they're not gonna mean? start feeling bad for you when you like no nah. when they, they yeah. when you basically show that you that they just made you feel bad. They're, they're gonna, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the, a dick no. person as it is right. to begin with. Yeah. So it's like sometimes yeah. I'm in a bad mood. I come off a little weird too. You know, you, you can't nail it every day. Were yeah. you doing this every day? Like how many days a week were you like? Like, were you treating this like a day job? Like, okay, time to go to work. Like, time to go serenade random strangers and get filmed. Like, how often are you doing it? So, I think at 22, I was living in my parents' house. I didn't care about, like, oh, you got to do it every single day and hustle, hustle hard. I kind of was like, hey, we're already showing a lot of growth, so let's just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I think when we went to L.A., I was sponsored to be there the first year, so I also didn't care. By who? Who? By Kobe, the whole channel. Like, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I also didn't. You were working for him officially? I feel like we were kind of partner. We were like collab. We we were like collaborators at first, kind of like collaborators. I don't think I was ever like employed by him. I think a little bit later he would like hire me to do stuff. Yeah. So maybe he had like a, I I was actually I've seen a lot of your stuff. I've never seen any of his, but people tell me he was like very very big on YouTube. Yeah, like way his numbers. Than I, way yeah, bigger his, than I was. What were his numbers? Like his subscriber numbers. Dude, he has over six million followers. He has over six million. Yeah. He's oh, a, he's like a legitimate huge YouTuber. YouTuber. Is he still huge? Or he's out of the space. He's kind of not doing it anymore. He's focusing on other things like right. modeling. He's actually I I'm not supposed to say. Uh, I can't <laughs> say he's he's gonna be he's gonna be in like a movie uh, like a real movie very soon. Wow, oh, like that's, that's, awesome. that's that's. But I can't say any more details. Don't oh. say any more details. I don't want to have to edit anymore. Then we probably have to. Right? <laughs> yeah, we. <were. laughs> well, I'm saying for his sake, honestly. Yeah, yeah. But hold on one second. How much? So something like that. How much is YouTube bringing in? Like if he's with the views that he's getting, how much is YouTube's? That or how much are you making off YouTube? Like, are you mo at this stage? You have. You're how much is the channel 000. making? I'm not going to ask you how much you were personally making or he was personally making. For people wondering, there's like a viable way to make money. Oh, yeah, dude. Absolutely. Like, you have to be killing it, though. We were getting tens of millions of views every month for, what, for like, years. Once you're doing that, you're making real money. You're also getting sponsorships. Bro, we got huge sponsorships sometimes. You know Dumb and Dumber 2? Sure. They, they promoted their movie through our channel and a few other prank pranksters' channels. What are they paying for such a thing? I'm not sure exactly, but it was probably in the tens of thousands. Wow. Yeah. And what about just for that one thing, you know? But also, you also get ad sense. I mean, you also get ad money. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and once you're having also ten millions of views a month, like those numbers are also big. Like, That's what I'm asking. What's YouTube, right? Everyone says you can make money on YouTube. I'm I'm not super familiar with with honestly with the space, and I assume most watchers are listeners and watchers are not either. It's just this concept that we hear about. So could you just share, you're saying obviously you need to have be killing it in order to make money. Someone who's has having the success that you are having, which is tens of millions of views over a month, yeah. a month for a couple of years, what mm -hmm. are you making in a year if you're having tens of millions of views a month? Uh, you know, it's trying to gauge so, something. Yeah, listen, there's a lot of factors involved, so it's hard to know. There's different, like, there's different monetization on different kinds of content. There's different payments throughout the, like, different um, months of the year. There's a lot of different factors, honestly, really? even more than that. Was, um, I'm not sure exactly how much the channel was bringing in, but I, I know Kobe. At, like at some point, he's like he announced, like, yeah, I'm a, like I'm a mil I'm a millionaire. So right, <laughs> which is yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's it's incredible. Nuts. It's and that was just having fun with your friends. Yeah, on, well, it's a lot. Of, it was a lot it's of a work. Lot of, you you know, right. this is a yeah, lot of it's work. Fun, People but it's a ton don't of work. realize how much work it is to make yeah. to make clean, good looking content yeah. at a regular pace for the internet is. A full time, it's it's a lot. Zach, how lot difficult is this? Let's be real. <laughs> how, how long does it take you to edit? Than, hey, I'll go on credit. It's on record. It's a lot less difficult than a lot of my friends' more like legit jobs. It's, it's more work than people. It's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work. It's how, a lot of work. Can I ask you how much an edit takes you, or how long? It takes I don't. You? I'm not the editor. Oh. I'm in charge of the editor. There's an editing I team that does it. Yeah. Right. You, we'll talk. Well, yeah, we can talk afterwards. You know, from one YouTuber to the next. You know, yeah. we have a. <laughs> don't mean to brag. We have uh, 262 followers. 262 followers on YouTube. Hey, listen, you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. I remember my first hundred subscribers. Really? Yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. You just gotta keep plugging away. You were lucky that you got viral at the beginning. Something I wanted to ask you is, um. Oh, now my brain's farting. Oh yeah, like when. Okay, so first of all, I'm getting very nostalgic right now because I was a huge YouTube fan, just like a right. fan of YouTube. We were talking a little bit before the pod about like how like all the channels I used to follow. 
you were kind of the what we would say like the first wave of prankster YouTubers. Absolutely. You were like first wave. Now yeah. it's like everyone and their grandma has a prank channel. There's so many kids on like college campuses. They're doing the serenading thing. They're doing the purposely awkward thing, farting in public, whatever it is. Yep. That's like that blew up. It's on TikTok now also. Um, like, do you kind of feel like you, you're like the grandpa of like these new creators? Like, yeah. dude, I was doing this in what, 2010? Yep. Way before 2010. Oh, oh, sorry. No. 2014 we started. Fine. Yeah. But that's you. 2014 you was when it started. When did you When I when I started. So you were the first wave of this. Of pranksters. We were the pranksters, first wave pranksters. of pranksters. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How long was YouTube really around before that? 2005. So yeah, it took I, seven, nine years. I said that people. really confidently, but I'm not it sure. It was sure. 2005, but I don't know if, if people really, I don't think it was so big in 2005, was it? Or I think YouTube was big within like one year after coming that's out. That's crazy. You, YouTube saying, was like. It took nine years for someone to come up with the idea of pranking. That's interesting. No. Do you guys remember not having YouTube? Do you remember like pre-YouTube? No. When like, when you wanted to find a video, there was like 17 different websites. Like maybe it's on this Flash website. Yeah. yeah. And then YouTube was like, all this shit is right here. All of it. Do you remember Meta Cafe? <laughs> of course I remember <laughs> Meta Cafe. Of course. Of course. So um, yeah. to answer your question, I think the technology became so like so good for pranking that like then that's what sparked the wave. Ah. Like those lavalier mics, they weren't affordable or around until uh, here. Right. Wait, that's, what, point. that's what, a great point. Interesting. You call yourself a prank YouTuber, but like so far on this pod, what we've discussed is you serenading women, which is haha prank. I really made you prank. like me. Have you done <laughs> prank videos? I've done a few prank videos, but the reason I say prankster, oh. the reason I say prankster is because I was on a prank channel. Oh, I got you. And okay. I and I hung out with all the pranksters. And there's and, it's a similar energy. Yeah, and pranking we all, and, and, and we all knew each other by the way. Everybody knew. That's each other. That's what I was gonna say. Is it like a small tight knit group of yeah. kind of like the creators in Williamsburg? Is that the same? Yeah. Can you shout out some names like that? Maybe people know from YouTube that oh, you were for like sure. boys Dude, with. We oh, who I was boys with? Okay. Um, definitely the New York pranksters. We were all boys. Dennis ETV, Moen, and uh, ET. They were, they're called, you know, Mo and ET? Oct no. Oct TV. All right, it's fine. They were, we were all the biggest pranksters in New York and we all hung out together. I, I heard and Kobe pranks. and I've heard, there, there was this, um, uh, I think he was like Middle Eastern, super big. Fusi? Fusi. Oh, Fusi okay. tube, yeah. Did you, did you guys hang out or not? Nope. Because we just weren't in the same place. Right. I actually never even met him. He I met a lot successful. of the big guys though. Yeah, he was huge. Yeah. I met Vitaly and stuff. What about, oh, Vitaly, okay. Yeah. I want to get into other people. Where's the show on Practical Jokers for someone who knows nothing? Where does that fall into this whole mix? Yeah, they were like interesting. They're so good. I love that show, by the way. Obviously, but so um, were they? You were doing the same idea, yeah, but on YouTube, YouTube. right? Right. So they're, I'm just asking. They're they way cooler than us. <laughs> they uh, yeah. they, they immediately got picked up on TV. No, I think they made pilots themselves. Somehow, they I think they it. posted stuff to the internet, and it like Maybe. Cool, like immediately like a yeah. label exec was like, "Get them on." Yeah, and and once and once that blows up, I don't think anybody else can really do the same thing. People think also think that they thing. were regular dudes. They weren't regular dudes. They they were all in a comedy troupe. They were they're seasoned comedians in their hometowns. True. Yeah, they've oh, been really? doing. Yeah, they were very comfortable. Making At least a, a couple of them were stand ups. Stand uh, maybe yeah, more, Saul maybe for them. sure is like a a known stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? Which other comedians, like, early on? Pranksters, I'm sorry. Oh, the Ali G Show was a prank show. The Ali G Show. The Ali G Show was a prank? People don't realize Oh, because people... Cause, Absolutely cause a prank He was in character show. and they didn't know. Yeah, and he was pranking them. He was pretending to be someone he's not. Yeah. Getting reactions out of them that they didn't realize what was it for. Well, he's like the god of doing it. He is god the god of, of being pranking. in a character. And then, and obviously, not... we're forgetting one very popular one. Jackass. Yeah. Jackass were pranksters. Jackass pranked each other. They didn't really prank, like, unsuspecting strength. That's true. We're arguing semantics here. We're like, yeah, oh, it's Gamara right it here, dude. They're pranksters. <laughs> Love it. Okay, then there's um, who's after? I mean, the Eric Andre show is a prank show. Dude, that's a prank. He's pranking people. When he's like drinking ranch in front of the business guys. Yeah. You know who's an incredible prankster? Nathan Fielder. Nathan for you. One of the greatest pranksters. Yeah. Because he's also underrated. You know him? There's an art to being a prankster. There's like a skill to this because maybe I'm totally missing something. I just don't. know. I think the main skill is not breaking character. Uh -huh. I think a lot Committing of people. Committing to the bit. Committing to the bit. That's you're an actor already. I have a great, great story actually right now. I already bombed the one story, but I think it's hilarious. Can I say round it? two, round two, <laughs> round two. It's actually a funny story. It, it might make me look like a pathological liar, but I'm gonna say it anyways. So Just, I met a meal. I, I was in Tel Aviv the last week that for Sukkot before I came back here. Right uh, last week I was in Israel. Nice. Uh, right after Sukkot, so I was there for Shabbos. And I'm sitting at a, a, a table with like 25 people. No one knows each other. So the host of the table is all right. All right, we're going to go around the table. Everyone's going to introduce themselves. And, you know, you got to do one interesting fact or something like that about yourself, right? So everyone's going and giving their spiel. Yeah, I'm a, you know, uh, my mom, you know, breastfeeds me, breastfed me orange juice when I was one year old. Oh, people coming up with all their stupidity. So 
it comes to me and I had nothing to say. I wasn't like sure. And I wasn't gonna say, oh, I have a podcast. Like I was just stupid. So I was like th thinking on the spot. Like I have to think quick on my feet. Shmuley, Shmuley Warren is right by me. But Shmuley watched this. So I said, they're like, okay, what's your, you know, most, your interesting fact? I said, well, I'm the only person in this room that I believe is, uh, you know, lucky enough to have a personal, uh, to be, to be personally be friends and be on a texting relationship with Michael Jordan. People like the whole place, like whoa, like holy smokes! And I, I would not break character. I was just like, oh, you were completely lying, totally, totally oh. bullshitting, totally. But like, like straight up, like, and first half the place was like, whoa, like literally just like, you That's know. Hilarious. And the other half was like, no, you're bullshitting. So then someone's like, you know, obviously someone's like, how does that happen? I said, well, you have to understand, my father's a very wealthy guy. We were at a golf, uh, we had a golf tournament, you know, uh, about it was uh, 12 years ago now. It was in 2010. And Michael Jordan was there. We were sponsoring something. And I just basically went on like a solid 90-second rant of how I know Michael Jordan, who's a huge golfer, if you know anything about uh, yeah. the GOAT. And everyone just bought it. And I was like starting to get like creeped out. Like, okay, am I a pathological liar? These skills are too good. Why did you do that? And, well, Why did I just you had nothing. I don't know. I was just in a weird mood. I was like a little drunk. Shmuley was sitting right behind me. Gotcha. Shmuley just like doubled over and laughed. or like cracking up. So like, you're doing it for him too, Shmuley. I don't know. We, I, it was just, I don't know. Just, I was with a bunch of rain. I don't know how it came up. Why? I was in a weird mode. I don't know what it was. It was just like an on the spot thing. And I just went with it. Um, and the whole meal was just a chaotic type of meal. I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't yeah. like it was like a, a sober meal where everyone was like, you know, being all like political, like, Right, you were having fun. It was a rowdy yeah. meal. Yeah, we have fun, fun here. I, was fun. I, I think that's like one of my favorite like aspects of like this whole like the culture of like YouTubers going out and vlogging and making like content is at its heart, it's you just trying to crack up yourself and your friends, and people connect to that. Like people want to. You know, there's something called like a parasocial relationship, and it's part of the reason why pe people like you get famous and get viral. Is people feel like you're their friend through the screen. And if you're funny, you're engaging, or you're doing things that they wish they could do, like go serenade girls or prank people, they feel like, oh, that's my cool friend. Absolutely right. Yeah. And yeah. and like and a lot of it is you want to have fun at your job. And like I never wanted to have a job where I didn't have fun. So I, it was I perfect... don't either, which is why I'm sitting in this room. <laughs> Love it. Where you finish your story? I'm... Yeah, I don't know what happened, Zach. So either way, the point is is that. No, Zach didn't like the story. I don't think. No, no, I love. No, I, I like thought the story. you were done. This is a good. This, no, no, no. That was I was just saying what ended up having is so. So, so one of the girls came over to me afterwards, uh, or a couple people actually came over to me afterwards, and they started asking me about it. I'm like, you know, I was joking, right? Like, never believe someone that tells you a Jewish guy that tells you like who's 28 that he's like boys with Michael Jordan. They're automatically <laughs> lying. But I was telling someone what happens to me who's the right person to pick because if I would have said like Tom Brady or Donald Trump. Then it's an easy giveaway. No one's going to believe me. And if it's like someone that's not so famous, like big deal. Michael Jordan happens to be someone that's been out of the limelight for like a solid 10 years, but he's still Michael Jordan. So it's like. So he's the perfect yeah, person to pick. But yeah, I was like, they're like, oh, that was unbelievable. How did you keep such a straight face? Da, 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 da. I'm like, I don't know. I just did it. But it goes back to what you were saying, not breaking character. So I think maybe I could be a really good prankster. Yeah, maybe you have the skill. Maybe you should yeah. be uh, out there pranking. Love it. Let's go Love prank it. some people. Um, Let's grab one of these cameras. We should totally do it, by the way. Can we, can we do that one time? Can we do it? Of course. Zach, are you down for this? I, I think it, I, I think it would be smart if you have this podcast out and then you and have then us release. do a second video. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll release Zach. We're doing it. Okay, guys. I'm very just, down. I'm totally down. I'm seriously down. Um, I, I actually was wondering, are whenever you, you um, because I know that you do different things now and you're, I know that you're focusing more on music now. Um, is... What is your like thoughts on and re-entering the YouTube space? Do you feel like you're or like in terms of like the pranking videos or the the serenading stuff? Is that really kind of your interest anymore? Or you, you move past. That's it? not really my interest, but if somehow there was a new element to it, I would to definitely do it again. You right. feel like it's oversaturated. Yeah, but I'm I'm also kind of done with it. It's like as an artist, it's like I had my time. You also doing you kind that. of conquered that world. I think I did. Like there's like there's like hundreds of kids trying to serenade now, so I'm like, all right. I did my thing. Really? Right. There's hundreds of kids you're doing the, that. You're the OG. That's the bottom line. No, I'm sorry. This is I the OG. Been... You are you are the grandpa of this. You <laughs> I, I have the these biggest kids. I have the biggest Serenading Girls video on, on YouTube. It has twenty two million hits. By far the biggest. But why was there no the... sound to it? I tried you sent it to me, I played it. There was no sound. Oh. I don't know what happened. Maybe we uploaded sound. it. Let's figure out that technical issue right here. Live no, because you sent it to me when you were asking me if you could come on. And I, you sent it to me. I tried playing. I'm like, there's no sound. Did, did I send you only one video? You sent me one video. The biggest one had 22 million. And then I'm like, okay, the sound is not working. Let me Google. Let me let me go to YouTube and put in your name, which I did. And I found a bunch of other videos that there's, had that, five, you, six, seven million hits. Did that video not have sound anymore? I don't know. Something you might have taken it out because of copyright. That would be really bad. I, would hope, be I, hope that, I haven't checked it in a while. Sorry to like, reveal that to you. <laughs> 
fun. Yeah, I'm gonna cry. No. <laughs> Either way, um, we're gonna make more pranks. Let's go. I want. So, what are you going for now? Right? Uh, you what told are you me, about now? Yeah. You know, what are you trying to like? Obviously, you're you're in a different direction. You're trying to move into a different direction in your life, right? As far as like your career, what is your focus now, career wise, of what you're trying to you know get done? That's a good question. I'm not. I I'll be honest. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm still. I hustle every day doing different things. We're starting a production company. Um. I'm doing stand up. I'm recording songs, playing shows, getting on podcasts. Um, I still making content, but like I'm not 100 percent sure. I do want to be like a star of the stage and screen. You you know that term, yeah. like a Bette Midler yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not like her, but <laughs> that was like, she's a, a, you know, that was a weird uh, comparison. No, why not? Like Bette Midler. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to be like Bette Midler. No, you, but like you, you want to do it all a little bit. Kind of song yeah. and dance, man. A real song and dance, man. Yeah, and, and like and have a name like a celeb. Like be a celeb and just do a bunch of fun things. I think that if you keep on going, the way success a lot of times works is that the path will kind of open up. If you just keep on doing your thing, a lot of times in life, the the clear choice presents itself. And, and all of a sudden there's that that epiphany moment where you're like, this, this is what I need to be doing. I mean, you had that epiphany moment already once. With, with, the, with the serenading the woman, with, with Kobe, you were saying how exactly. music with the prank – that type of idea like exactly it just happens out of nowhere and you're right because i was doing a bunch of things at the time and like i i didn't know where anything was going and all of a sudden boom this happened and you don't even realize it all of a sudden it hits you like oh maybe this is the thing and then you like go to sleep tonight and you're like let's freaking go like that type of it, it, you see it in your mind you're like wait a second this is gold right i already know it's gold 100 percent. can i ask i don't know if we're like, off topic but like i, I want to know like your your background too with like what you do because you said you're talking about success and I want to know like what your background um, is. I don't think I'm like the number one person to talk about success, uh, but I, I would say that I do real estate. I, I okay, cool. tr you know, attempt to be successful in deal that, making yeah. in real estate. Uh, what does that mean? Just like, so I, I'm a broker, which okay. uh, simply means that I find people who are looking to sell their properties, find people who are looking to buy properties. And basically I'm a shotgun. I, I gotcha. make the match, negotiate the terms of the deal. That's what you do full time? That's what I do full time. Yes. Very cool. When I'm not bothering Zach about the podcast and driving him up a wall because I'm a maniac. Is the edit done yet? You How think, many times have you heard? You that? think you're joking? It happens all day. <laughs> no, I told. I him. assumed. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm very obsessive about the work that I do. Am I, Zach? Will we? We've been starting this new initiative where label does not text me about the job uh, until after his work hours of six. It's best. It's what's best for him. It's what's best for me. It's what's best for the pod. And you went a whole two days before you broke it. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was not even two days. It was like literally a day. one day. Yeah. And then today, the non-Jewish nanny episode just came out tonight. And yeah, tonight I, I was didn't like, see it yet. No, we we work very well together, me and Label, because like I'm like a creative. I'm a creative too. I consider myself to be creative. Like I'm, I I make music. I you know perform places. Uber and, talented, in my opinion. Yeah, so uh, I'm a dancer. I want to know more about that. Into it, and I, I yeah. love podcasts. And you guys I, I do dance. Think, you guys should. You guys should collab. We're, we're He's a, a sick dancer. Bro. Network. I'm not a dancer. He's a sick dancer. No, well, we could talk. I've I've harbored a strong desire to be on like a YouTube making content my entire life. Do you do TikTok? Uh, I've done a few, but that's like where, I haven't like gone. gone that's where the dancing it. is. Yeah, I I got to take that first step. That is where the dancing is. But um, what kind of dancing? That's so cool. I, I I'm a hip hop dancer. Nice. I'm like kind of less so because I've been like a little bit injured recently. I'm in physical therapy, but like Sorry. yeah, no, no, it's chill. But like yeah, I'm, I'm I'm involved in like the dance world here in New York. But and then like label who is also a creative person, but he's like really good at like he's a real good manager. He's a good boss. He's good like he's got the vision for how to work things. So we work very well together. You know, kind of the creative side and then like the business side that comes together here. Also, like we both like interviewing people. We really enjoy yeah, getting I could to tell. know people. I could tell both of you are, yeah. are. That's the thing. You have to be intrigued by people. You have to, you have, to have your attention to like off yourself when you're doing this, right? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And yeah. I have to have all my attention on myself. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so kidding. interesting. I'll tell you why. When I started this podcast, there was such a piece of me wanting to share who I am with the world and like. It was, it was much more of a self-centered thing. Not that it's not anymore. It probably will always be. <laughs> but with that being said, what I learned very quickly is that it's not about you at all. And it's like, check your ego at the door. It's all about the guest. And the guest is the one that has to do 99% of the talking. Well, and what you learn is that no one gives off shit. <laughs> no, no, but really, no one. No, but truly, like, to make, to, I, I think we're getting much, much better. I think I, I've yeah. gotten, this is, being, doing podcasts, in my opinion, is an art. Like, I really think so. It is. And it, the first 20, it was just, it's tough. Like, not interrupting each other, just like flow of conversation, making it palatable to the listener's ear. There's just a lot of different factors. So, yeah, no, this is my own creative type of thing. Um, and I, I think Zach is also awesome. You, um, 
you told us that one of the things you're working on now is you want to start your own podcast. Do you have an idea of like what sort of people you want to interview or what sort of what direction you want to take that podcast in or not really yet? Yeah, because I, I know a lot of people and I and I, that's one thing about me. Like I actually know who to who to get on the podcast because you have to know the right type of person. Right. We talked sure. about this. We, you have to have an interesting person and they have to have an interesting story. Mm-hmm. What I'm what I'm setting like dealing with right now is setting up the technical aspect. I love what you guys have in here. Thanks. I I was trying to set up a podcast. I come in here. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm way behind. <laughs> you also know that no one is in my opinion. I don't think anyone that I know that's in the Jewish world, at least. Uh, has for, this from up. for sure has this type of setup. Well, we don't know. I I think. I've, have you seen like stuff coming out of like Meaningful Minute? It yeah, seems totally. Well, it, seems I, well produced. it is, but I don't think it's uh, in my personal opinion. I could be wrong. Whatever. Just, we're number one. Okay, we're the no, best. No, that's fine. No, we're not you're, number you're, one. You are, you are though. I'm just saying when I see production, <laughs> I'm very big into production. It's like one of my specific things that like no matter how shitty my my actual product is, the production. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we right. suck. That's <laughs> just the truth. I, I I don't know. That's just how I do. If things. we didn't have those fancy uh, subtitles, people would realize like. But yeah, you were interviewing me you could continue because i have another question that i want to ask you so if you're done with the interview of me which is fine i want to know your background of like what you what you're doing what you're up to in life like no so i mean i do the real are you estate. dating anyone i do the podcast you... um are I you was dating, dating anyone i'm not dating anyone at the current moment i was but not anymore you want to go pick up girls with me um yeah let's do it okay. let's let's start to pick up girls. absolutely we have to do a prank video but i want to get back to something you, we were discussing earlier because i'm actually curious and i think it it's a little bit more personal you don't have to answer it if you want but you were sharing that you had like an existential crisis, right? Um, sounds back. like with, yeah, I'm going back. We'll bring you back to the beginning. Um, <laughs> Uncanny memory on this one. With, <laughs> well, nothing, nothing. No, right? But, but like, right with, I say, I assume when you say existential regarding faith and, you know, how you were brought up, this and that. Yeah. Um, are you able to, to share a little bit about what that journey was like and what the exact existential questions you had were? Because uh, I am, a lot of these type of things a lot of other people feel similarly to right. they just don't want to express it and be honest about it. Right. Um, as far as the questions, I think everybody has the questions of like, why are we here? What are we doing? What's, what's life all about? Mm-hmm. But for me, my, my journey, like I don't hold, I'm not the type of person to hold back, which is why I was doing good at the serenades. Um, when I left, I left like the path completely. I was still in the same town, took off the Amka jeans. People were looking at me like, is that Zalman? Like they, they couldn't believe it. And I was like, I don't care. Cause when I go, I'm going to go hundred percent and figure this out. And then a lot of depression. Cause the, um, first of all, you're, you're like shunned, you know, the deal you're, mm-hmm. you're kind of sure. shunned a little bit from your community, from your upbringing, from your family. I do even. not know the deal. My religious uh, experimenting has happened much later in life. And Oh, are you serious? I thought you were joking. You don't no. know about being shunned. From like, I've no, I've never been shunned from anything. I'm very familiar. He's a unique. No, you could, but you could understand how other people are. Of from, course, yeah. yeah no, was, nothing you're saying surprises I was shunned, me. I was I'm just shunned. saying it's not my journey. People were tell their kids like, "Don't hang out with him." Where anymore. was this like, in Pasig? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they were telling their kids not to. Yeah, yeah. Um, Depre- a lot of depression, and then you you start hanging out with kids who are kind of similar, and then you start you get it you get into like drugs. So I, I got into like I was doing drugs my whole teenage life. Heavy drugs or like weed? Ha- like really heavy. Like I was in rehab twice so. got it yeah wow um so here's we've had a lot of that on the pot also yeah yeah you're, sure you're, you're you're just like marking off like the tortured artist the existential the, the creative it's, it's i'm it's, glad i fit that type it sounds it's a very fantastic positive tape. no it's a well, great you, type did you struggle with depression before you uh when you know went off the dark yeah for sure so you did struggle so you had depression yeah. and then but it got way worse way worse because well, like then it's like it's coupled with an existential crisis like every day you're just like what is life? I have no answers to anything. I had all the answers. They told us everything. Did you go off the dark because of a philosophical thing or you think it was just like a a pain-based trauma slash, you know? These are good questions and and very personal, but it's okay. Um, We speak about these things all the time on this podcast, by the way. I know. I I I kind of saw saw something. Um, Yeah, like, listen, I I did go through a lot of trauma, like a, a really tough childhood as well. Um, I'm sure that has a lot to do with the depression. I'm sure that has a lot to do with like rejecting my upbringing too, because right. it's all, f- you know, yeah. fused together. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was bullied a lot as a kid. I can't really go so much into this, but I was like, I, I had like hor- like bullied horribly as a child. Really? Ho- like Aye. worse than you can imagine. Um, yeah. What ages? We're talking about like in elementary school? Yeah. All, all through. Yeah. I think what happens, here's what happens. You get bullied as a kid or you go through tra- any sort of trauma. And what happens is your self-esteem drops to the floor. We we're talking about self-esteem before. And then you have to 
you have to um what's the word i'm looking for you have to overcompensate right you have correct. to overcompensate constantly so i was like okay i'm gonna be like fame like that's right. that's probably part of it the we're, best this we're yeah. getting very deep so now get deep then i'm like yeah we we i gotta get famous now and i gotta get like you know i gotta show everyone that i'm not and yeah. it's a, it's kind of like there's an unhealthy element to it, but it's also like part of a healthy ego. It's like, wow, now I'm actually doing something really productive with my life. I took all that low self-esteem. I'm like, I'm bringing it into something where I'm actually like inspiring other people. And a lot, but a lot of it is, is, is narcissistic. You're using it as fuel. Yeah. And low self-esteem directly becomes narcissism, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's for sure. Narcissists are very known for having very low self-esteem, but I, I would say that if we're getting again, if we're going really deep, okay. I would say that I think that using you can't really use low self esteem to catapult yourself. You can use pain to catapult yourself. If, if, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but I'm just like speaking out loud as I'm thinking. You can't use low no, self esteem. I don't think it's, or low it's not healthy. You're I saying. don't think it's low self esteem. I think that it's the pain that you use as fuel. I don't think it's the low self-esteem you use as fuel. The pain, it's what comes first, chicken or egg, right? The low self-esteem happens and you're in tremendous pain because of that. And then you use that pain as a means to, yeah. to catapult but, yourself. But the low self-esteem is what, what creates the overcompensation of like, I have to prove myself more because I feel so badly about myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not saying- right. I'm in full agreement with you. Yeah, I I'm, think that's a really good point that it becomes narcissistic. So do you feel like, it's funny because also like, People talk a lot about like millennials and like our culture of putting our stuff up on YouTube. Like oh, we're, we're, all, narciss we're all narcissistic. We're all narcissistic. That's, that's the thing. Um, being aware of it is really important. I think yeah. I'm much more aware of it now than I was when I like started doing all this stuff. Like people would be like, "Dude, you're an asshole." I'd be like, "Really? I didn't even realize." <laughs> I did, and I'm like looking back, <laughs> Thank I'm like, you "For putting it out." <laughs> no, I didn't listen to them either. I was like, "Fuck, fuck you." What do you know? All right. Um, and then I, you kind of like start realizing, you're like, "Wow, I'm like, I have to like." check my ego oh like you said check your ego at the door like mm -hmm. you, you got to do that when you're when you're like going for anything you want in life it happens yeah, to me I, I i've been ranting a lot lately about i don't like the fact that narcissism feels like there's a big focus on narcissism over the last couple of years it's like become the the new catchphrase kind of yeah. and i don't like the fact also like gaslighting like people just like like taking words that are have very serious context to them and just like throwing them out there when they don't even know what the hell they're talking about like the actual definitions because a lot of these things mean are very serious disorders i don't like when people the way people are using the term narcissism these days because if you've ever been around someone who's really narcissistic it's unmanageable it's like they never think they're wrong ever you know that's true yeah. and typically the only way these people uh you know get some self-awareness is typically if something really drastic happens to their life really drastic that they're forced to look in the mirror so long as something's going well in their life that they could pin it to pin their success to uh and 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 kind of lie to themselves to tell them everything's okay because I make a lot of money mm -hmm. or because, you know, there's all sorts of things or I'm a big musician, nothing, I, I'm successful, nothing, even if you have a thousand people telling you you're, you know, an asshole. You'll... I think you're talking about somebody in particular about... <laughs> Ma? <laughs> what? Anyway. What do you I think I'm saying? I feel like you were talking about somebody like who's been in the news a lot lately. Who, Donald Trump? No. Who? Kanye. I feel no, like, oh, no, so I'm funny. not even talking about Kanye. I, you started saying like the musician thing, and then I'm like, oh, he's talking no, about I'm Kanye. I'm saying in general. <laughs> I'm just in general. I'm, I'm just saying that a lot of people like to throw out the word narcissism and and, and that's true. And so gaslighting, I, I know, it's true. It, I think it's, it, to get the label as you know someone who's a narcissist. I think it's. I don't even want you to call yourself a narcissist because I don't think it's fair. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I just appreciate talking that. To you, I don't. Unless, listen, that's just my personal. No, no, you're right. I I was using it as the word that like, yeah, you're right. It's it's we're all talking about it lately, but we all are on the narcissist spectrum. We yeah, really sure. are. We think about ourselves first of all before anybody else. That's already what narcissism means. It's a lack of perspective for others, right? So like already we're all kind of on the spectrum somewhere. I think when you're going to become a YouTube, like when I was doing YouTube, I it started getting fueled way more. Like you don't you don't know. Like you're seeing me now. You don't understand like how I felt so cool and like I was the shit and like I'm amazing. Well, you okay. grew up a little bit. You you got older. You got some perspective. Yeah, you know? that's that's if for someone when when you get famous, you were in your young twenties when you start to have real clout, like the kids call it now. Right. Of course, <laughs> that's going to make you feel full of yourself. Like, who wouldn't? Well, who right. wouldn't feel that and way? And I was a jerk. Listen, I really was. People people tell me they're like, "Do you know how much of a jerk you were back then?" I was like, "Honestly, no, but I believe it." Like. That's actually really beautiful that like you you were able to have that self awareness. You don't seem like you judge yourself too much for it. Like you know, did something yes. happen in your life that made you change? Change what? 
become, become less, less of an jerk. ego. Yeah, yeah, become less of a jerk. I think getting, I think being in the YouTube world, like as as much fun as I had, it, it was also kind of depressing because you're around people who are real narcissists, like you were saying. Yeah, and you're kind of like, I don't really want to be in this world. They're kind of obsessed with themselves and they're obsessed with like views and their image and nothing else. Like nothing's nothing's real. They're not they're not like real no people. Substance. There's no wholesomeness. Is oh. it really like that? For a lot of people, yeah. And I, I kind of wanted to get out of that world. So I think once once I hit my breaking point of like, I got to get the hell out of here. I'm suffocating in this world. Then I started doing more work on my character. And like, and the YouTube views went down. So they go in. Yeah. Yeah. You heard it here, they folks. If you want to make it on YouTube, there stay is, shitty. There is, <laughs> exactly, dude. There, was, yeah, there definitely is something about, you know, so true. Ha, you know, being a little bit, you know, real. like there's a very fine line between really believing in yourself and becoming famous and being cocky and becoming famous. I don't know if I'm not explaining myself clearly right now. And I, I understand that, but there's something in order to become famous a lot of times and, and to have that drive, you kind of need to sell yourself on a, on in a strong way to yourself. You need to really believe in what you bring that you're different, that you have the ability to do this. And a lot of times to buy into that story, you need to, it, it takes a lot to buy. You have to buy into that to become I famous. Think, I think you're right. There, there's a real aspect to it because if you don't believe that with your your heart and your soul, you're not you're not gonna be able to withstand the pressure and all the work that it takes. You gotta you gotta be a cocky mother. Ever a lot of times, it's very hard to become famous and not be a cocky mother. It's 100. percent And and no one's gonna believe in you if you don't believe in yourself initially. Yeah. So so also yeah, you have to fully commit to it. So, but I was saying there's a difference between confidence and cockiness. Sometimes like finding that person is very confident, it's, which yeah. is like quiet. And becoming famous is much, much more rare than someone who's did cocky. You, uh, did either of you guys watch the Kanye West before? I was watching it before this all came out. Um, you know, the, the anti-Semitism, the, the documentary that's on Netflix. Which one? I think it's just called Yay or Genius. Genius, maybe? Genius. Um, I didn't see And you it. see this, like, old, early footage. And he was, frankly, was not so... He wasn't cocky. He was much... I mean, he wasn't successful yet. He was, he was 20 years old, whatever. And he's in the studio, and they had all this footage of him. And he was, he was, you could tell he was a little bit more polite. He was, he was like a very polite, like almost shy guy. I, th I think he used to get made fun of a lot for like not being so hood and so like tough. You know, he was kind of soft, pink polo shirts and all. And, but then the second anyone talked about his music, he was just like, no, my stuff's really good. Like I deserve everything like coming to me. Like he just was his own advocate. And like, that is, I, I do find that like you really, it's pretty amazing. You really, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And like so many people, and I'm, I'm just talking straight from my own experience, t think that it's being cocky to love your own stuff. Mm -hmm. And to and to so many of my friends who are artists, they make incredible work, and then the second it comes time to post a story about it, oh, I don't want to market myself. I don't right. want to be in people's faces. Exactly. The label has none of this. And I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> no. I'm joking. It was a joke. Good. It's a joke. No, it's I good. It's good that he does I know, I know. It's a very, I, thank God he doesn't. This is what I'm saying. No, because I do believe there was a point in my life where I totally felt that way. Yeah. And and I've learned L that it's label, a... Label, yeah, label, you don't even have to I'm defend. Not I'm, not, I'm not done. No. You don't have to defend. Oh, it's not I'm a personal attack. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a point at this place in my life, I'm totally comfortable saying, no, I think this this fucks. Like, straight up. This is awesome. Like, yeah. This I podcast to... fucks. It this does, podcast dude. has consensual sex with it other does. podcasts <laughs> in a dominating fashion, <laughs> missionary style. <laughs> I'm having a great time. So it's, it's, yeah, it definitely, Whatever. it's good vibes. Do you think that you have to be delusional a little bit and like the delusion kind of becomes reality? I hope not. I'd <laughs> like to believe you don't. Do you think you were delusional? Obviously not. People connected to what you were doing. Why I don't is that know. Delusion? It's, hard, it's hard to know if I was delusional or not. It's hard to know. I don't think Kanye was like, "Oh, my stuff is gonna is I deserve everything coming to me." That sounds like a delusional line, but maybe it's not. Maybe he, that's not. I, I don't. I, no. I didn't. That wasn't a direct quote, but it was. Oh. It was more just like the that's way so, he just. That is a direct quote. By the way, like, okay. I don't even have to know. I know that Kanye has said that before. You, you, what is love, right? Like love is like like when you're in a relationship with someone, like you 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 take their side in a lot. Like you you you're committed to them. Like you have to be like you have to love your own work. Means like to commit it to it. That doesn't mean you can't have doubts. Like, you can have doubts about someone you're in a relationship with. Like, oh, I don't know. But you're committed. Like, no, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to make it seem good. Like, it's it's not a delusion. It's almost like a purposeful delusion. To be like, you know what? There are days I'm going to wake up and I'm going to think the things I do, whatever they are in art. But right now we're talking about art. The things I do aren't as good as I thought they were yesterday, right? Every artist does that. They always talk about that. Like, oh, it's fire in the studio. The next day they listen to it, they're like, I'm a fraud. 
Yeah. What's happens. commitment? What's loving yourself? What's loving your work? Love is going on the days when you think you're a fucking fraud and like I'm never releasing this shit. It's awful to go like, no, but I committed to this. Like, and I thought it was good the other day. Like, it's good. It is good. It is good. If that's delusional, sure. I think it's a beautiful delusion. And what it does sometimes create is there's a lot of shitty art out there. There's a lot of people making art that aren't that great at it. Mm -hmm. I say good. Good, bring out more shitty art because the more people I just want to I just want people to feel okay putting themselves out there because then the people who are gonna make something amazing will. But I would say even better mm. for if, if you, we were always scared about putting something shitty out, no one would ever get anywhere because even someone great puts out a lot of shitty things. True. You have to be okay mm. with putting out something shitty yeah, because yeah. you'll put out for yeah. every single for every twenty shitty things that you'll put for every good one you'll put out, you'll put out twenty shitty ones. That's the reality of life. There's That's also true. a deeper concept here, which is like, why are we even as a culture so obsessed with like, oh, like like art became this thing where it's like, oh, you do art? Like, well, how good's your music? Like, where does it produce? Oh, is it produced really professionally? Like art is something kids do. Like this making writing singing songs, whether you're serenading to a girl on YouTube or or in the studio with 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 Rick Rubin is human expression. We are expressing ourselves, it's that. art, it's healthy, and it's this, we have this obsession with like, yeah, but like, what's your views? Or like, 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 are you professional? Is it for real? My podcast you is You are, you are not. Like, <laughs> we're just being human. Like, that's how we, art is, art is what we do. And like, it's, that means it is okay inherently to make shitty art. I hear that. No, I always joke around that nice. I, I probably said this on a thousand pods so far, even though I've only done 30, but everyone probably heard this before that listens. I always talk about how this podcast is my art. Like, I can't play music or anything, but I have, like, a certain creativity piece that I use that well, I really no, want. you're also a Chippendales dancer on the weekends. Exactly. Are you? Yeah, he gives a fantastic lap dance. Fantastic. <laughs> I've had many. <laughs> Very nice. So that's how you guys met. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly yeah. How you met. Yeah. That's what I do for a living, by the way. I told you real estate. Oh. Was His real estate is this lap, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> wow. So yeah. yeah, good stuff. We've honestly. gone everywhere in this spot. I, I feel. Is there anything else? What's okay? What's something with all the things we've talked about? And you've you've dropped like seven bombs on this podcast. I knew you were cool and that you did cool shit on YouTube before this, but like after hearing, like you've just really blown my mind. Is there anything else that people would be surprised to know you've been involved in? Oh man, like a talent of yours or like a story that came through that. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I have to think about it for a second. Right. I, wor I worked with Kevin O'Leary. You know him from Shark you Tank? You did? That's yes. wonderful. I don't want to name drop, though. No, name the fuck out of dropping. Bro, this is a safe space. Okay, this is this is a cool <laughs> story. I've so, so You never know who your fans are going to be. Like you said, you connect with people. I don't know who I'm going to connect with. Sure. I've connected with people in very, very high places. Also, people in very low places, like the whole spectrum, right? So... One of the people I connected with is this business guy. I don't know. I don't really want to talk about him. I don't think he wants me to bring him up. But no name. He is a very, very serious business person in the world. Like he he closes hundred million dollar deals kind of mm -hmm. guy. I I didn't know who he was either. Same thing as like the MTV guy. I have no idea who these people are. But uh, he hit me up one time, and I know when when you get a sent an email, you know if it's somebody legit or not when you've been doing it as long as I have. And maybe, probably you guys can relate. Right. So I knew, I saw the email, I'm like, oh, this guy's legit. And, but then he starts, he sent me another email. He's like, do, do you want to perform with Kevin O'Leary? We're doing like this event and he's gonna, he plays guitar. I don't know if you guys know that. Kevin O'Leary from yeah. Shark Tank plays guitar? Yeah. Plays guitar. What's pretty the good. Heck, did he want you doing with Kevin? Like, I'm trying to imagine. He what wanted that me to show be on is. stage with him because <laughs> he was a fan of mine. By the way, Kevin O'Leary was just at a big real estate conference, Jewish uh, real estate conference called Ecor. Apparently, he just bombed. It was just a total shit. Really? Show. It was not good. Yeah, I heard that. He was he was good when we performed. He was like playing guitar. No, he didn't play guitar there. He was oh. a maybe he's a better guitarist uh -oh. than he is a speaker. <laughs> he's like, he's like a world renowned speaker though. Like he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Whatever. Now, but anyway, okay. So he told me he's like, yeah, like Kevin's performing. We want you to come. I was like. Yeah, okay. Like I know sure. you're I know you this is some kind of a scam. He's like, "All right, you don't believe me? Just come to the city. There's this conference going on. Just come and and check it out. Bring your guitar though." And I'm you like, literally emailed him back like, "Yeah, right." Like Well, he seemed so legit. So I was kind of trying to get a feel of this. Like when yeah. someone says something like that to you, you immediately think they're lying. Like Yeah, the BS detector goes off. Yeah, it's like you saying like the Michael Jor Jordan story. People yeah. are like, "What? Like, what are you talking yeah, even yeah. talking about?" But then it's almost weird enough to be true. Yeah, so yeah. that that was this. So I'm like, I'm like, all right. So I'll ch I'll check it out. So I go. Sure enough, Kevin's there. I meet him in the lobby, uh, and I have my guitar, and I'm like, I I was like so cool. I don't know why he just seems he seems so cool. Like the way he is on Shark Tank is is not him. He's chill as, as hell. Like, so he's in the lobby, and I'm just like, hey, Kevin. 
He's like, hey, I'm like, I'm going to play guitar with you today. He's like, oh, I heard about that. You want to jam now? I was like, yeah. So I'll show you videos. Like I'm jamming. How long ago was this? Five, six years ago. Five, six years. I'll show you videos. So we're jamming in the lobby. People are like videoing it. They're like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then we just get up on stage and jam. And I have video. I'll I'll show you. Yeah, it was was really sick. That's That's, again, all your stories are like incredible. They're also the most random. Like, because it's a random space. That's such a random thing to do. I think, I think serenading on YouTube was so random that it led to all the random things. The randomness. Yeah. Like big, being big in Malaysia. (laughs) Malaysia is the randomest thing ever. That is hilarious. Wow. Dude, how, how, what are we up to? I one last thing. One last question here. Okay. Um, I think we basically hit on most topics. Um, what's your relationship with like your family after like, you know, obviously choosing the path that you did? Because uh, no, that's normally like a total shit show. So I'm you want to go first? Uh, no. He has, no. A good, he has a good relationship. I don't know. Um, it's, it's tough. It's tough. My family is very religious. I have one brother who's not religious. We get along. The one that lives in Austin, yeah. Texas. We get along fine. Um, my family, I feel like my family is like, we get along, but there's kind of like a wall up, uh, and always will be. Mm-hmm. And I think the way that they look at the way I live, like it's, it's kind of messed up and, and wrong in a, in a lot of ways. And I'm like, Hey, I just want to be me. Right. Um, and, uh, it's funny. Cause what you do yeah. would be so out of pocket for a secular kid growing up secular. Like you do what for a living? You serenade girls on the internet and then right. to do it to like a... If I grew up secular, I would not be serenading girls on YouTube. Right. That, exactly. That wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Because you would have been already good with girls. So <laughs> exactly. Would have, I would have talked to girls. I wouldn't have had this complex that I would have to overcome. I love it. Thank God for Jewish complexes, <laughs> Thank right? you, yeah. Also, one thing I do want to say is my dad, He's he is a very fascinating, weird person. Um, I don't get along with him so well, it's true. But like growing up, he kind of did what I did on YouTube later, which is go up, go up to people and like, kibbutz we call it like kibbutz with them mm-hmm. and like and like mess with them on the this street shit runs in your blood bro yeah what was he doing that for he had fun he's he's bored a lot i think he like he thinks life is kind of boring and he tries to add excitement to it i think i got very influenced by that oh and your dad sounds fascinating because he wasn't getting filmed he's no he's he most, just he did is this. he is such a fascinating individual you should have him on the podcast wow. i just love people who do bits <laughs> who like realize that life is a little absurd and it's like it's just a bit like I'm just doing a bit. And I think my dad looks around and he thinks people are just like living like, okay, pushing shopping carts in the supermarket, like yeah. picking out things. And he's like, let me go mess with everyone in the supermarket. I love Fuck, it. Yeah. My only I question is it. like, well, I, you might be the first person we have on the pod whose parent we then also have on the pod. <laughs> no, I think we should do like a group therapy session. I think we should bring your father here. I'm sorry. To- Dude, it would be, you would have to have a team of doctors here. <laughs> You'd have to have. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, oh my God. Wow, dude, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm happy that, if I may give myself a little pat on the back, that I even listened and took them up on <laughs> That it. you listened? No, meaning initial. No, it's very easy just to like have someone reach out to you. Like I said, I was getting a lot of people reaching out to me that I was like, at a certain point, I was like, I'm not interested. Like, everyone who's reaching out to me is just weird and like socially off. And then I was like, no, you know, something. You had some premonition that he wasn't. I mean, something, I, 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 yeah, stuff. But like, I'm, I was very hesitant, but I was like, okay, maybe there's one really interesting person that I'll, that will message me and it, it worked. And I was like, wow. Dude, you've already had what we want. You've had real reach. You've had success in the internet doing something creative and fun and unique. And that's all we we're trying to do here. So like, we're looking up to you on that. And now you're like coming here asking us how to make a podcast so like we can learn from each other. 100%. Absolutely. I'm, and I appreciate it. And I honestly had a great time. So like, thank you guys. Dude, you're yeah. a legend. Thank you so much. Stop. Come on. No, now feed the narcissism a little I, bit. I like, okay. Yeah, right. Feed the narcissism. I, I, no, I, I love the journey. I love the, the creativity. And by the way, we talked about things that I, I didn't think I'd be comfortable talking about a, a few times. But you know what? Like, let's let's do it. Let's put it out there. And like, hopefully we like help people, inspire people. And, and It's not a joke. That's the point. That's what I'm trying to I'm do. I'm really hoping that like a lot of kids growing up now, right now in New Jersey, little Chabad kids start serenading girls on the internet because of this <laughs> me too i hope so <laughs> that would be part my... of the next generation <laughs> exactly Anyways, Dude, thank you so thank much thank you so much i appreciate it all right guys peace